Shri Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, thank you for joining today. We wanted to seek the blessings of Radha Madhav, Radha Shyam Sundar, Krishna Balaram, Bal Gopal, Gurnitai, Shila Gopal, Guru Mahas, assemble devotees and share some pastimes on the appearance day of Lord Varaha. It also is a very auspicious day because it's Ikadashi as well. So this is a verse from the Srimad Bhagavad Puran, uh, third canto, 11th chapter, 37th verse, describing the appearances of Varaha. I am to Katita Kalpo, Diviat Yasyapi, Parata, Varaha iti Vikyato, Yatrashik, Chukaro Hari. Translation or descent of Bharat, the first millennium in the second half of the life of Brahma, is also known as the Varaha millennium because the personality of Godhead appeared in that millennium as the hog incarnation. Mm. So, this is the, in the Bhagavad it's describing the appearance of Varaha in the second half of the life of Brahma. And we are in the 51st year of Lord Brahma. Uh, Brahma's life, first day, and uh, this is when Ra appears. So, the background behind why he appears is there um, was a incident that took place in the spiritual world one time. The four Kumaras, uh, here they are. They are the first mind-born sons of Brahma, very powerful living entities. They wanted to visit Lord Vishnu in Vaikuntha. This is Vaikuntha. And uh, Lord Narayan, Lakshmi Narayan are in the center. So they came to the gates of Vaikuntha. They were so powerful they could enter. But the gatekeepers who were guarding the uh, western gate, their names were Jay and Vijay. They were looking at the appearance of the four boys or seemingly looking boys although they are amongst the oldest uh, because they are the mind-born sons of Brahma and they refused them entry thinking that these were just little boys um, once the four Kumaras were stopped by Jain Vijay gatekeepers at the entrance of Vaikuntha in spite of several requests, they were not allowed inside to meet Lord Narayan. This angered the four Kumaras, who cursed Jay and Vijay to be born as mortals on earth and live there. So, um, now, Lord Narayan, he, of course, knows everything. And he appeared before the gatekeepers. And he firstly apologized for the behavior of the gatekeepers to the um, four Kumaras, saying that whatever the servants do reflects on the master and uh, their behavior in stopping them from entering to see him was not right. So... Then he turned to Jay and Vijay and he said, don't be disheartened. Actually, this is my arrangement. Um, but I'll give you a choice. You can go to earth and remain there for three lives. Or you can stay, you can go to earth for seven lives as my devotee. So three lives as my enemy or seven lives as my devotee. What would you like? So, and after serving either of these sentences, they can re-enter, re-attain their stature at Vaikuntha and be with him permanently. Now, Jay and Vijay, they were thinking, hmm, staying away from Vishnu for seven lives would be too much. So they agreed to the second option, to become his enemies for three births. So this is actually the arrangement of the Lord because sometimes he likes to fight but he can't fight in the spiritual world because everybody is his devotee 
as soon as he picks up his Sudarshan or he picks up his Gada, um, the devotees will be paying their obeisances. So there will be no such fight. But sometimes the Lord likes a bit of a competition. <laughs> so he made the arrangement actually for um, the, the guards to be cursed and for them to pick uh, choosing to be his enemy in the three births because he wanted that competition, that fight. He relishes that sometimes. So Vijay took birth as Hiranyaksh, a very powerful demon. He'd just come from the spiritual world, so he's extremely powerful. At the time of his birth, unlucky omens appeared everywhere. Violent winds uprooted trees, volcanoes erupted, and inky clouds rained endlessly as lightning slashed the sky. Owls screeched fiercely, wolves howled at the moon, and trembling cows gave blood instead of milk. So these omens are not good omens. It means that a demoniac person has arrived. Of course, uh, this is as we already mentioned, and then arranged by, by the Supreme Lord for Hiranyaksh to appear as a demon. Hiranyaksh grew to be as large as a mountain. His golden crown appeared to kiss the sky. The earth quaked as he walked. Greater than his height was his pride, <laughs> but even greater was his greed. <laughs> he mined so much gold from the earth that the planet lost its balance. It fell out of orbit, plunged into the ocean at the bottom of the universe. So in, in Vedic cosmology, the planets are also conscious persons. We know Mother Earth as Bhumi Mata, Mother Bhumi. Celestial beings wanted her rescued. So the heavenly uh, beings wanted Earth to be stationed again at its right place. The proud Hiranyaksh dived into the ocean, terrifying all the sea creatures as he whirled his golden club. He was eager to fight and he thought for looking uh, for Varun, who is the lord of the waters. He's one of the devatas, very powerful, very strong. So he came face to face with Varun. He challenged him to a combat. To fight. This is uh, an example of what Varun looks like. His carrier is the crocodile. <laughs> anyway, Varun said to uh, Hiranyaksh, I'm an old man. I've stopped fighting. No point fighting me. But you are so expert in fighting. The only person actually equal to you is Lord Vishnu himself. So you should challenge Vishnu, find him and challenge him for a fight. And when you meet him, he will destroy your pride and he will lay down you down to sleep on the battlefield. So this was the warning that um, Varundev gave to Hiranyaksh, that uh, you will meet your match in Vishnu. Not caring for the words of Varun, Hiranyaksh left in search for his enemy, Vishnu. Meanwhile, Lord Vishnu, in his form as a huge red boar, entered the ocean. So he actually came from the nostril of Lord Brahma, a very small, tiny uh, boar, but he immediately grew as a huge red boar. Sniffing through the mud at the bottom, he found the earth planet. So this was one of the reasons why he came as a boar, to, rest, to rescue Mother Earth. So he dived into the ocean and with he, found, he sniffed her out where she was. And then he lifted earth on his two white tusks rising out of the water. So this is uh, Lord Varaha, looking transcendental. So the Lord, he can take the form even of a boar. 
and is of course never contaminated. The boar, as an animal, is always dirty. Is not a very pleasant animal to be around. But the Lord, just because he takes the form of a boar, doesn't mean it acquires its qualities. The Lord is always the Lord. So important to understand this. So he is, um, puts the earth back at its right orbit. Hiranyaksh was, he was waiting. He was very angry. Oh, ambiphious, amb amphibious beast, he cried. This earth is mine. Today, I will please my demon friends by smashing your skull. So Hiranyaksh knew this was the Lord. And it was his chance to fight with a, a worthy opponent. Lord Varaha was concerned to protect Mother Earth and so raced through the space with the planet on his tusks. Hiranyaksh followed him, shouting, Coward, come back, come back. <laughs> Lord Varaha is in charge of the law of gravity. Making the Earth very light, he gently placed her on the surface of the sea where she floated like a turquoise ball. So this is a very interesting picture of Lord Varaha rescuing Mother Earth with his tusks placing her on orbit. With the Earth now safe, Lord Varaha turned to Hiranyaksh and laughingly mocking, laughed mockingly. I am indeed the beast out to kill dogs like you. I am not afraid for you are a mortal bound by the laws of death. Give up your foolish talk and fight. <laughs> Hiranyaksh, trembling with anger and hissing like a cobra, sprang at the Lord with his golden club. Varaha dodged the blow and struck out with his own mace. As the fight raged on, both were injured and the smell of blood increased their fury. So when it says that they were both injured, of course the Lord's injury is um, superficial in a sense because he's completely spiritual. There's no part of him that is material. Uh, he has a spiritual body. But in order to uh, increase the lila and the enjoyment, he exhibits injury. Mm -hmm. From up on high, the residents of the heavens watched this terrible fight. And they begged Lord Varaha, please do not play any longer with this wicked demon. Finish him off quickly. <laughs> it is said that actually um, Lord Brahma appeared to Lord Varaha and, and begged him. It is coming, it is almost going to become night time. And at night, the demon, demoniac class, they, um, their strength increases. So please, Finish off the demon quickly before it turns to night, because at night time he'll get more strength. <laughs> Lord Varaha glancingly, glanced lovingly at his devotees, then sprang at Hiranyaksh, aiming his mace at the demon's chin. But Hiranyaksh knocked the mace from Varaha's hand and sent it spinning deep into space. The demigods cried in alarm. Alas, alas, what will happen now? So they were thinking that Lord Varaha is now at a disadvantage because there was no mace in his hand. Lord Varaha called for his famous Sudarshan Chakra disc weapon and it appeared in the sky razor sharp and whirling like a circular sword. Seeing this, Hiranyaksh exploded with fury, glaring at the Lord with burning eyes. He hurled his mace, screaming, Now you are slain. The Lord deftly knocked it away with his left foot. Then coolly and calmly, he said, Pick up your weapon and try again. <laughs> so, roaring like a lion, uh, the demon again hurled the mace. And actually, he didn't like it when the Lord offered him the chance to pick up his weapon again. He thought, hmm, this is, uh, he's insulting me. 
He wants me to pick up the weapon. He's waiting for me to pick up the weapon and fight again. It's a bit of an insult. So he became even more angry. So he hurled his mace against the Lord. But the divine boar easily caught it, just like a hawk catches a mouse. He offered it to the demon. Why don't you try again? Hiraniak became ashamed and angry. Taking instead a flaming trident, he hurled it with all his might towards the Lord. Again, Lord Varaha easily cut it into seven pieces with his razor-sharp disc. Now, using his magical powers, the demon became invisible. Fierce winds blew from all directions. Stones dropped out of the sky. Angry clouds poured down blood, urine, hair, and bones. Armies of fierce demons appeared as if from nowhere, riding on phantom horses and elephants. Using his own mystic powers, the Lord dispelled the demon's magic. Still, Hiraniaksh did not give up. He ran up to the Lord, embraced him, and tried to crush him with his powerful arms. The demigods watched in horror, seeing their forlain faces. Lord Varaha decided, I have played with this demon long enough. The Lord has enjoyed the battle with a worthy opponent, of course one of his own devotees. <laughs> so this is the scene uh, uh, where this leader was. This is Mother Earth there. And uh, Lord Varaha looking ferocious and fighting with the brave <laughs> Hiranyaksh, giving the Bo, Lord Bo great uh, fight. Oh, actually, Mother, Mother Earth is here. Mother Earth is here. Casually, so this is the final bit, he's just simply slapped Hiranyaksh at the base of his ear and Hiranyaksh's body quivered. His eyeballs bulged out of their sockets. He fell down dead like a huge tree cut down by a hurricane. <laughs> so that was the end of Hiranyaksh. Simply a little slap at the base of the ear. So he's the Lord showing his immense uh, power and strength. Although he had been toying with the, the demon and fighting with him, actually the demon was uh, nothing compared to his strength. Lord Varaha placed Mother Earth back into her correct orbit. The demigods were overjoyed and praised the Lord. You are not forced like us to take your birth, but you do so by your own free will. You appear in the form just suitable to perform your mission of rescuing the earth from a dirty place. To rescue the earth, he appeared during the Swayambhu Manmantara from Brahma's nostril and during the Chakshush Manmantara. This is another uh, time. <laughs> this same Lord Varaha appears. This time, in the Chakshush Mantra, he appears from the water. So he doesn't appear from the nostril. Lord Varaha, the best of tusked beasts, appears to kill Hiranyaksh and rescue the earth. So this is by Rupa Goswami in Laku Bhagavat Amrita. So in Chaitanya Leela, Mahaprabhu was pleased with Murari Gupta. And one day, gave him a vision of his form as Varaha Avatar. So 500 years ago, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he also gave the Lord, the op the, uh, he gave his devotee Murari the opportunity to have vision, darshan of his Varaha form. The Lord lifted Murari's water mug on his nose as he gave a loud roar in his house. <laughs> Murari considered his life to have been fulfilled by this vision and he sang a hymn in glorification of the Lord. This event has been beautifully described by Vrindavan Das Thakur in Chaitanya Bhagavat. This is in the Madhya Khanda, chapter 3. The Lord took on the mood of Raha in the house of Murari. The Lord climbed on his shoulders and danced in the courtyard. This is from the Chaitanya Chaitamrit, 117.19. After killing the demon Hiranyaksh, Lord Varaha rested at Vishramgat in Mathura 
and spoke the Varaha Puran to Mother Earth. So Vishramgat is very famous in Mathura. You can still go there today and bathe in the gut. It's a very uh, nice, nice, uh, peaceful place. And this is it, actually. Vishramgat. Uh, amazing, actually, to bathe here. So, Varaha Avatar Ki Jai. So, I wanted to stop there. If anybody has any questions or any comments, please do ask. Or, or uh, you can unmute and mention anything you like. So, uh, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji Hare. and all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Um, very nice uh, session today. Really mm. enjoyed. Um, only like uh, Vijay was born as Hirana Keshap, yeah? Hiranyaksh. So, uh, what happened to Jay? Ah, Jay was born as Hiranyakashipu, and he was defeated by Lord Nasinga, half man, half lion. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that, yeah. So, I, I, it's very nice today's episode. I mean, not episode, the session. Mm -hmm. And um, today was more interesting because I, I remember you, you done this last year. Yes, that's right. We talked about yeah. it. Yeah, the war Kumaras. When I saw the picture, oh, I Kumaras. said, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. And they want to go. They enter the... Um, uh, they wanted to visit the Vishnu and the giant yeah. Vijay said no. And that's then uh, Vishnu Bhagwan gave the um, curse to the giant Vijay. Yeah, he gave him a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Very nice. Yeah. I missed yesterday's session. So I'm a bit yes. sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. And it said that anybody who hears this pastime of Lord Varaha defeating Hiranyaksh, uh, actually all of his sins are destroyed. Uh, of this. Oh. So very just, just to hear it. Just to hear it is enough to destroy all of our sins. Just hearing these pastimes. Oh, very powerful. Nice. This is in the Bible. Very, uh, really yeah. nice. In the Bhagavad Puran, in the 19th chapter of the third canto, it, it, it says, whoever listens, hears this pastime, their life's sins are destroyed. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Nice to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Lord Varaha Ki Jai. And of course, it's also the um, auspicious day of Ikadashi today. So tonight uh, we will hold satsang at... Uh, um, seven o'clock in the evening.